fix, I thought I might as well take advantage and film another video. And this is a topic that I've been wanting to share for a while because it is has nothing to do with illustration or anything, but living abroad. And uh, I moved to Stockholm when I was 24, and I grew up in the States. I don't know if you know that, so it would be fun to share my experience of living in a different country. Now I feel like it's a little bit different because I'm not like fully American because my parents are Swedish so I feel very Swedish and then so it feels like home here but even still there's a few things that I could possibly share that would be interesting to you if you are planning on moving abroad or are living abroad or just find it interesting. So let's see what the questions are. I have my notebook. Let's see, um, oh, first question is what is your name? My name is Christina. <laughs> uh, which country do you live in? Where are you from? As I just said, I live now currently in Stockholm, Sweden, or I live like 10 minutes outside of Stockholm, but it's still Stockholm County. And I am from the States. I grew up in Portland, Maine. Do you live alone or with your family? I moved away from my family, my mom and dad and my sister, but I moved to Sweden where I have the rest of my family, so I actually gained more family here where I have cousins and aunts and uncles, grandparents, so that's kind of fun. And I live with my boyfriend, or we call it in Sweden here, Sambu. We, we live together. It's a little bit different than just being boyfriend, girlfriend. And we're not married, so we're a sambu. Question number four, how long have you lived here? I have lived here for nearly nine years. In January it will be nine years, which is crazy. Uh, have you ever lived in another country? I, well, I obviously grew up in the United States. And then I did a little, like, one-month Paris program, so I don't know if that's considered living in Paris, but we can we can say so. Uh, how old are you? I am 32 years old. Number seven, this is the big question. Why did you decide to move abroad? Uh, I think because I have Swedish roots and we visited here quite often. It wasn't every year or anything, but I felt very Swedish. It's so hard to explain. I don't feel like an American and I don't really feel like a Swede either. I'm somewhere in between. Maybe closer to the Swedish side. I'm there. I have the Swedish mentality. I'm quite reserved and quiet and I just felt like I really would fit in here. So I, after college I decided that I would move for maybe a year or two to test it out and I lived with my aunt and uncle and they helped me set up everything like my bank account and they sent me to a little art program so that I could meet friends and I got a job and all that stuff and I really loved it and I didn't want to move back really but then I met your one, my boyfriend so then like the rest is history <laughs> um, and I can't see myself moving back ever. Was it hard to get a residence permit or visa? So this is the easy part since I am a Swedish citizen because my parents both were Swedes and they moved to the States. I could claim Swedish citizenship up until the age of 16, I think, or 18. So I did that. So I could just move here. I just had to... Um, register in the country and I got a new like a, a personal number rather than my old one which was like a fake I was born somewhere else number does that make sense like a social security number but in Sweden so I unfortunately don't have advice for people who move want to move to Sweden and need a visa or anything like that what was the worst experience you've had there here in Sweden Mm. I would say that I haven't had that many bad experiences because I've had help from my family who is living here their whole life so they know what to do. 
but I would say one huge, huge problem in Stockholm is finding housing. And when me and Johan decided to move in together, it was very, very difficult to find a apartment. You can't just rent. There's not lots of rent properties just waiting. They're all you have to wait in line for like 10 years to possibly get a really crap apartment at the end of the subway line. So um, we just, word of mouth through friends and you have to move constantly. I think we moved like five times in five years. It's not the greatest. We even lived in a changing room at um, his parents' car dealership for a little while because we don't have anywhere to live. So that's the only thing that's very challenging about Stockholm. Tell us about a tourist attraction sightseeing place. I have to say that I really like Gamla Stan, the old town in Stockholm. I, it's on, of course, every tourist um, itinerary if you're coming to Stockholm. It's just it's so old and I think that's really exciting for someone who hasn't lived in the states where everything is quite new especially I lived in Florida for a while and nothing is older than from the 60s so having walking on cobblestones and walking past buildings that are from like 1200, 13, 14, 15, 16, 1700s it's amazing and it has this um, this feeling when you're walking there. There's of course like the touristy street that you can completely skip because there's nothing to see there but if you get lost on the little winding streets it's it's stunning. I love it. They also I think it's quite nice to take a steamboat from the city hall, Stadshuset, and then you can take the steamboat all the way to Drottning Hall which is where the king and queen have their residence. And it's a beautiful garden that's kind of Versailles inspired. That's really nice. Number 11. Do you speak the local language? I do. Growing up, my parents never sat down and taught us Swedish correctly or like with books or anything, but we learned it by ear. I understood quite a lot when I moved here. It was, I wasn't fluent, I wouldn't say, but I had a good grasp of the language and I could obviously communicate but the problem was that my parents never forced us to answer in Swedish so <clears throat> excuse me so when we were little we would they would speak to us in Swedish but we would answer in English so I never developed Swedish as a spoken language which was kind of irritating when I moved here but I would say after about six months of living here and being forced to use Swedish every single day it was, it just came to me, kind of. People still don't know, they know that I'm not Swedish when I speak, but they can't tell where I'm from, and uh, they definitely don't think that I'm American, so I, that's a plus, I guess. <laughs> but after nine years, um, I definitely am 100% fluent. There's still a few words that I don't know, like, I don't know, business kind of words, like lawyer type words or doctor kind of things. So not like, but everyday conversation, obviously, it's fine. What do you think about the country you live in? I love Sweden a lot. And how well do they receive foreigners? Now this is the huge problem now in Sweden and the rest of Europe at the moment. I, there's this like in dark cloud of racism and just no good. I don't want to bring in politics, but it's very, very sad. I would say for the most part, Sweden is very open to foreigners and very kind. I don't, that's a hard question. I hope it gets better. Do you miss your family? I, of course, miss my family. It's very difficult that they are um, like half a day or a whole day away. 
because they live in Florida, so it's not just one plane trip, it's usually two. Um, it, so it takes a long time to travel, so it becomes that we only see each other maybe every other year. It's also, it's so great with Skype, but there's still a six hour difference, so it can be difficult to find times to speak to each other that work. Um, but it's a sacrifice that I made to create a life that I am 100% uh, pleased with. I didn't want to live in America anymore, so now that I live here I'm so much happier and I'm it's worth it to me, even though it is hard not to be able to just go and have a coffee with your mom if you want to, or go have my dad help me with something, you know, around the house, or I don't know, you know, or just like hanging out with my sister and being silly on a night that you feel like it. So that's kind of sad. What products from your home country do you miss? Um, there's not much that I miss because we have everything here, but when I did move, I they didn't really have peanut butter. And I love peanut butter, so I would always bring huge, like, uh, Skippy jars from the States when I was visiting. But now we have Skippy, and it's actually better than the American kind. I assume it has less sugar and stuff like that. I also miss Target, because Target's amazing. What are your plans for the future? My plan is to continue to live here, but who knows? I have a job that allows me to work pretty much anywhere that I have internet access. Um, so, let's, <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see, but for the most part I am very pleased with living in Sweden and I love the Stockholm area. We might move even further away from the city center because of housing prices and all of that, especially when we're gonna have, when we're having, expecting a kid, we're thinking of moving further out into the suburbs. What's something you use every day that you, your home country should also have? I think this is a fun question and it's sometimes it's so hard for me to think of um, things that are typically Swedish that I know don't exist in the States because it's quite similar anyways. It's a very western country obviously. But there are a few things that I would definitely take and would be annoyed with in the states I think especially recycling here it is no joke you recycle everything like any little tiny piece of plastic I re recycle or it just you just do it and it's we have hardly any trash like every week we we throw away a garbage bag of like this much and if we had <clears throat> if we had compost available in our community then we would have like no garbage. Another Swedish thing that I think is practical and so smart is to have separate duvets when you're sleeping with your partner in a king size or queen size bed. Each person has their own duvet or comforter and uh, I could never imagine sharing one with him even though we're fully in love and all that stuff. Have your own duvet is so much smarter. You can sleep so much better. There's not someone else pulling or there's no tugging, you know, like, and I can make myself into a little burrito. Like, I don't understand this whole sharing a bed or sharing bed linen. That makes no sense to me anymore. <laughs> what suggestions or tips would you give to someone who wants to live in this country? If you re I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Sweden is a beautiful country with people who are very open once you get to know them. I think people don't realize this, they think that people are a little bit reserved and not so nice, um, but if you open yourself up and you ask, and you like ask them a question, you can't, not like in the states where people are so open, they'll ask you like how are you doing and all that stuff. In Sweden you have to like take the initiative to meet people and be nice and, and then they're the most genuine people you'll ever, ever meet. It's beautiful here, the The nature is stunning, it's very expensive, so that's not a problem, and housing's ridiculous, but if you live somewhere, maybe not Stockholm, that won't be a problem. I don't know. If you have the 
um, ability to test it out, living in a different country, I would definitely, definitely do it. And then the last question is a little bit goofy, but we'll take it anyways. If you could describe in one word your experience in this country, what would it be? And I would describe it as complete happiness because I have met the love of my life, if I'm going to say that. I've also really come into myself. I feel like myself here. Um, everything's just amazing and happy and I love it. So that's my little... Um, living abroad tag. I hope that it was interesting. If you have any more questions about Stockholm that I didn't go through in this, uh, these questions, I'd be happy to answer. Um, unfortunately, I can't help you with, with anything about visas and stuff like that, but anything else, I'd be happy to. Uh, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in internet land. Bye! <laughs> You're the classic song gathering. Such a beautiful prince, perfect. You should be a strong gathering.